The water sector faces a large number of challenges, including climate change and population growth with a decreasing resource. And in the developed world, we are also facing aging infrastructure, much of which was installed by the Victorians and is no longer fit for purpose. The way we've dealt with our water systems in the past has really been to build one-size-fits-all kinds of solutions where we withdraw large amounts of water from the environment and we build very large infrastructure to move that around. And that's really not sustainable moving forward into the future. So what we really need now is to think of disruptive solutions to change the way we impact on the environment with our water systems. Those solutions need to be technological solutions, but also people-based solutions. And a key element of those solutions is collaboration across the entire water sector, from the supply chain to the researchers, to the companies serving the water, and to the individuals using the water. So the big question for us at this point in time is, can we envision a future where water systems become a positive impact on the environment and on society? And can they be tailored to fit the local context a bit better and get away from using the one-size-fits-all kinds of solutions? The 2065 Research Consortium is funded by uh, the EPSRC of the UK Research Councils. And it's a six university consortium working on eight areas of disruptive innovation. It's led by the University of Sheffield, and we have partners at Imperial College, University of Exeter, University of Reading, Newcastle University, and the University of Manchester, all working together on what we feel are key areas for potentially changing our current water systems and moving us into a new 50-year uh, horizon for water system innovation. So for example, if you think of a large city, it could be London, it could be somewhere else in the world where there's a lot of people concentrated, there's heavy infrastructure, and that infrastructure represents a very large investment. We may not be able to get away from having that infrastructure, but we could certainly understand and operate it better. So one solution for that could be that we have robots in the pipes. And those robots could live in the pipes and be constantly sending us information on the condition of the pipes and the performance, and possibly even do repairs and remove the need for any human intervention into pipe systems, which would be great for traffic and great for other disruptions of service. Along with those robots in the pipes, we could perhaps have different qualities of water delivered in those pipes, which require treatment of different quality of waters at different places. For example, you could have a box, a device in your house that's treating your potable water to a different standard. There's really no need to be flushing perfectly clean potable water down the toilet every day, which is a large percentage of domestic water use. Also, a lot of opportunities that we're researching on water and energy and being able to link the two and maybe use our water systems more effectively in conjunction with the energy systems to have real gains for both systems, especially in integrating renewable sources of energy. And all of that could live in, in a, a world with real-time information that's coming from throughout the system and even from our catchments and that way we've got the, the correct treatment matched to the current conditions and that could change on a day-to-day -day basis. So really we feel there's great opportunities for collaboration across the water industry. We cannot do this alone as researchers, but we need uh, participation from the companies who might manufacture these devices in the future and we need the cooperation of the governments and water companies who are delivering these services to people, but most of all we need individuals to think more about water and think about how they could be part of the solution moving forward into the next 50 years.